for. Um, well, again, and one thing is that, and that uh, came up as a question in, in a discussion among um, contributors to this work, that um, in this proposal, we are not considering the case that there are multiple um, ACH. So, uh, in this proposal, uh, their assumption is, and actually we're trying to make it explicit in the document, that uh, there is only one ACH as a payload. So, uh, what that means is that you have to check the, whether there is already a gal for some other reason towards the bottom of stack. And if there is, you may not run your OAM. Um, well, how are uh, there um, know that um, finds the gal not in the bottom of the stack, process it, um, so it's not yet uh, firmly specified in a document. But what it should uh, conclude is that there is ACH that follows uh, the label stack. So how that yeah. uses this information, it's um, yet to be defined, and we can discuss that. But what basically the gal interpretation is uh, very simple. Uh, no, ma no matter where you um, find the gal, it indicates that there is one uh, ACH that follows the label stack. That is correct. That's the only thing we can probably that, that we can say for sure that um, the uh, that um, gal implies a an ACH at the bottom of stack exactly once. I uh, I have a question, Greg. Um, in the case where you have multiple gals spaced by labels, uh, non 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 special purpose labels or regular labels. Um, Normally, the gal is processed by the egress. You know, it's popped and then the uh, it's followed by ash, as everybody's explaining. But in your use case, who's processing the the gal that is not at the bottom of the stack? Uh, great question. So, uh, we realized that we need to do this specification, and one of the uh, points that Sasha made was that why uh, we added this placeholder in a document. Uh, but for now, it's an uh, empty uh, section. Uh, basically, that will um, provide the specific or explanation and what the node that finds the gal not at the bottom of the stack uh, should and should not do or must and must not do. Um, More specifically, at, at, the, at the minimum, yeah, at the minimum, uh, you just pop the gal label. But yeah, that more specifically, what happens at the PHP node if it sees a the gal with with s bit equals zero? Does it does it pop it or not? Uh, it's a good when question. You get, when you get um, a when you when the gal gets to the top of the stack, it means it must be processed. Yes. And... Yeah, I mean, yeah. So presumably, what you'd have to do is to do whatever OAM action you you are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then you ought to um, pop the gal and do what the next label is, didn't you? Thank you. Um, yes. And um, we need for... to specify that, of course. Yes, you need to specify. So basically, it's a, a local policy which is conveyed by. Um, management control plane. So it's not encoded in the, in the data plane, at least it's how I think about it, of it, um, because there could be a different things that be done uh, if- no, Well, I... there are only two actions you could take. You either pop it and continue on with the next one, mm -hmm. or you terminate the packet at this point. Yes. Uh, and I think probably we need to write some of that down, don't we? Uh, we will. And uh, that's basically uh, why uh, there is this um, placeholder section. So, so, so why would you, why would you put, since you have to put the ACH on before you put the label stack on, 
why would you put a gal higher in the stack that was going to do anything other than um, do some OAM action, pop it and continue? Because if it's not going to do that, you might as well just have not bothered with the rest of the stack and you might as well have put the gal at the bottom of the stack and uh, revert to a previously known solution. Um, well, again, um, as uh, I in the introduction, I gave this uh, how we arrived to the situation that we're looking at um, multiple gals is that in SFC and PLS, so with a basic unit that mm -hmm. encodes a service function, we want um, to steer OEM packet. Uh, to bypass the service function because the service function uh, is not required to support OEM or at least uh, SFC OEM. So we can do that in uh, NSH because OEM there um, has a distinct indication. Uh, and why would we, just trying my head around some of this, why would we could put the service in there if we were going to put the gal there and not do the service wouldn't we put the gal in place of the service well but then uh how uh you know then we'll uh the label stack um yes well if we insert gal label stack for the oem packet will be different from uh the label stack uh for the data packet but yes. um you know uh it happens anyways if we use gal okay if so, we use gal at the bottom of the label stack it makes other uh, uh, label stack of the pack data and oem uh different uh already so um, yes but uh because it's a special uh purpose label then uh the impact is only on the length of the label stack not how it's processed So, 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 just to be clear, what do you want? What, what do we want to happen, right? So, we're 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 going down this label stack, and we're throwing away labels, and the gal arrives at the top. We're going to go away and do some OAM function. Are you saying that we go back and we pop the gal and we pop them without looking at it? Uh, for SFC and PLS, uh, yes. Right. So, how would we know? to to do that well, presumably part of the ach action would be pop the next label unconditionally um because otherwise it's a very dangerous thing to put in there isn't it well um the thing uh, is that uh, they, 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 and, and let me let me jump in here um how many labels do you pop because ssc is you know uh, you could have multiple stops in your um, yeah. service function so if if you if you're going to pop maybe it's not enough to pop one label well hang on a second you're right you could have two service labels and back to back couldn't you wait and how how do you know how many to pop exactly um well uh the basic unit is um is defined as two labels so um that in my understanding you you cannot have multiple service functions uh following their uh, uh sff label so um so you you might you, if you have uh multiple um uh service functions connected uh to the same uh sff then you either use a uh, label swapping uh, model or you have to use uh, multiple basic units. Right. So this is, and, 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 and again, the, the basic unit, as I understand, uh, there, uh, it, it's a context label. So uh, on the wire. Uh, their uh, basic unit is the same label stack, so there's no special labels to indicate that this is a basic unit. Um, I have a question. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I was forgetting how this worked. But do we want to decouple uh, 
the you know the proposal to have uh, multiple gals in the stack from the applications uh, trying to uh, leverage this uh, this the the, the, the couple that the, the discussion you know uh, um, um you know one one thing is to mm -hmm. tackle uh the presence of the gal multiple times and the other thing is uh, okay there's a new applications trying to write on this uh or do you want to so um, you know? uh, actually uh law asked a very good question because that did not appear in uh our discussions uh within um contributors to this work uh whether um okay. it's specifically for sfc and pls environment the multiple gal labels or it's a, a broader like non-mplstp environments so and that's something that um Yes, I agree. It's open for the discussion. So um, we might decide uh, that uh, multiple gal labels to be used only in uh, environments uh, described in uh, 8595. So, this, Greg, this probably uh, really needs. That before you go further, you, you say why, and whether it is SFC or some other reason. Um, why this uh, having multiple gals is uh, useful. And then second, uh, to the point that uh, Steve um, Stewart was going, going to, um, say how you process it. But I mean, if you say it's in the SFC context, uh, then you have to pop the SFC labels. So I, I think um, while you can decouple, if you don't have a reason for doing this, then it's very hard to think of this in the abstract. <laughs> And the second thing is, um, you know, uh, what exactly you do is also important. So, can, can I make a, a, a process suggestion here? This sounds like it needs a discussion between the authors of RFC, a, a voice call between 8595 authors and, um, uh, and Greg to just work out exactly what should be done and then make a proposal to the working group. Because yeah. I think we're going to be in, we're in the minutiae of eighty five eighty nine here, aren't we? And um, this probably doesn't need the entirety of this group to at least come to an an opinion on what is what should be done. So, I agree with Greg. I, I agree with Stuart here that there are details that are still needs to be ironed out. I think, um, and uh, I think we have uh, yeah, given that the audience today. Uh, might not all be interested in in uh, in the gal use case um maybe we can take an action item and follow up uh as yeah i think the yeah i think the best thing to do is for the um the, the group that wrote that rsa which me and i see john is on the call and i see and probably adrian is on the call is he on the on the call this time this week see them. okay well it probably needs the three of us Plus, whoever else you think uh, you, you want to invite, just to try and have a common opinion and try and work through all the minute detail before um, giving it, you know, talking in front of the 32 other people on this call. Uh, in this uh, particular case, I would like to have the uh, working group chairs invited. Yeah, you're more than welcome to be invited. Yeah. Who, um, who's going to call it? Uh, do you want it? Do you want to have it an open meeting or uh, a private meeting? I suspect it needs to be an open meeting, uh, open. but just on the. Uh, I mean, uh, because of all these sort of current geopolitical sort of things, it probably needs to be an open meeting, doesn't it? Okay. No problem. I'll take an action. I already noted down in the minutes that uh, we are suggesting this meeting, and um, uh, I'll take the action item to set it up. Yeah. Okay, great. And I agree with Stuart's proposal. Let's uh, have a, a more specific uh, discussion for this. And uh, after that, we'll see if there's anything that we want to come to the uh, wider audience. Okay, one, one last thing before we switch to another topic. Uh, is there any data? Are you going to get back to me on a date and time? Uh, well, because we are distributed, uh, might be, you know, uh, you can see 
who uh, must be there. So, um, okay, let me let me then trigger an email and uh, get yeah, the, start, uh, start yeah. email will will come something that you know equal suffering time. What were you, Greg? Uh, yeah, you're West, you're West Coast, aren't you? West Coast. I'm West Coast, so, but I'm so used to getting at six o'clock in the morning, so. <laughs> so it's it's probably going to be five o'clock UK time sometime, isn't it? Or some similar sort of thing to be civilized for all in the spot that everyone wants to use. Anyway, yeah, but, we, we yeah, will, but, we but will I, we'll I agree with Stuart. I, I agree with Stuart. It's probably uh, has to be an open meeting with a, a number of people um, strongly <laughs> invited. Yes. Okay, with that, I stop sharing and uh, give it back. Okay. Um, let me go back to the agenda again. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the next item uh, we have here uh, is the idea of multiple uh, ash channels after the bottom of stack. And uh, we talked last time, I, I, I have the minutes uh, whatever was recorded uh, from the meeting last time, we did talk about you know uh, the payload, MPLS payload, and uh, um, Jeffrey presented the GDF solution, which allows uh, a next header value. And um, so, um, any anyone wants to comment on this, or um, you know, I know we talked about it last week. Uh, there were a couple of action items, uh, you know, that anyone has uh, anything to add? There was TLV, LV, uh, V and proposals, model driven semantic, how to encode the MPLS payload. So, Eric, I have one comment on this. Uh, to be able to follow up in the future, I would like a pointer to the minutes from um, April 21st in the minutes for today. So, uh, what you discussed uh, last time was probably not that much track two, it was pretty much track one, and we want to have uh, as much as we can uh, documented in track one for on the things that we are discussing. That's a fair point. Yeah, I, I agree. And yeah, the, the point I'm trying to raise is that we discussed it last week. Uh, we captured two main requirements. Uh, if you remember, uh, the label stack should be able to indicate to a transit node that there is a uh, special header follows after the bottom of the stack. Um, maybe we called the special he header or maybe we did not agree on the name. And requirement two was the label stack should be able to indicate to the egress node that uh, what follows is a special header, so it processes it. So these are about uh, what we captured last time from requirement perspective. How do we encode it? There is a GDF proposal. There was a idea of having a LV light length and value or a value only, or a type and length and value, which is uh, you know, some someone pointed that it might be uh, performance impacting. Um, um, okay, I'll. Uh, I uh, that's a fair point. Uh, I will have uh, a link in the minutes, pointing to the discussion points of last week. Um, I'm not sure if anyone is interested in giving an update on this. This is what I'm trying to. Uh, uh, point on point three, and maybe we can talk about four. I'll uh, give some time. So, actually, I have a question because uh, I okay. got confused somewhere down the line, and that's why I put the uh, question, uh, the agenda item in. So, what is the relationship between the number of gals in the stack? And the number of ACH uh, after the bottom of stack bit. Yeah, that's a good question to to Greg. Um, I don't think there. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, Tarek. Um, well, um, again, uh, I I try to um, mention that in the uh, presentation. 
uh, in our proposal, um, multiple gal uh, only indicates single uh, ACH. <laughs> Okay, uh, but the, the multi multiple ACH is uh, not been considered um, in this uh, context in multiple gals. But then you have the problem that Stuart pointed out. If you already have an ACH in the packet, then you can't add anything more unless you want to do exactly the same thing. Uh, again, uh, for the problem that we're trying to solve with the multiple gals, we don't need multiple ACH. So if somebody needs multiple ACH, and as I understand, multiple ACH achieved by a, a different uh, shim, which has uh, can be parsed. So uh, basically, um, there, as I understand that, it has uh, ACH that indicates their special uh, metadata, and the metadata has its own shim, which uh, can be parsed, uh, and there could be multiple metadata under the one single ACH. I think there are a number of processing issues around that. But yes. what, I'm, what I'm saying is that if someone uh, put a um, if someone puts an ACH after the bottom of stack bit, and that is something different uh, than what you want to do, are you saying you can do uh, without a um, without an ACH? No, again, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, because I understand that uh, if we're talking about a generic uh, function, that the proposal is that there is a new ACH type, and um, ACH type indicates that there are multiple metadata in ACH. Uh, I think I need to see this written down, otherwise I can't really get my head around it. Uh, yeah, the multiple gals, uh, indeed, it's not, this is why we have an action item to follow up. Uh, it's not clear. Well, I, use think, um, I, I think we should first solve the multiple gals problem, and, and um, the author said that they'd go off and figure it out and come back. And if there's no one proposing multiple ACHs, I don't know why we should go there. But um, because what uh, Greg is saying is, you know, he just wants one ACH. So let's at least resolve that and table the multiple ACHs until someone says, here's why I want to do it. And then we can figure out um, how to do it. But let's not figure out how to do it before we know why to do it or if anyone actually cares. Yeah, we took an action item. Uh, I signed it, uh, Greg, and you know the, the the authors of that RFC. So uh, um, let's uh, let's uh, push this discussion to next week, or uh, depending on the track, and uh, we can come back to it uh, if you're okay with that, uh, the one team. Is it okay? We can table this discussion. Uh, I, I know that we said we're not talking about gal. Uh, we jumped from three or two. Sorry, Tarek. Um, in four, the indicator is the gal. Uh, that was the question from uh, from Loa. He uh, he uh, was asking about the presence of multiple gals. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, Loa, do you still want to ask number four in the context of a different, uh, a different indicator, or was it only in the context of a gal? No, I think it's a more general question. If you actually run into an indicator in the, when you're scanning the label stack, are you continuing to scan the label stack after that indicator to see if there are more, or do you actually 
jump to the uh, action you are supposed to do based on the indicator. Yeah, the all, well, that reminds me of the EL ELI problem uh, and the readable depth. The, uh, there was a suggestion to add it multiple times, uh, and the reason to add it was that you know you could not read further. Uh, there is a limit on the read depth. So I guess oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but there's a limit on the read depth. Can't with the infection way. Right, so that's the point, is you insert it so that but the transit node sure. can be there. Yeah. Um, Sorry? The problem is that it might be, you can go beyond that, but there's a performance penalty. And so when you hit the... Oh, yes, all right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah I can okay. understand that. Yeah. That's a good point, yeah. But but the first one it will give you the, the action that needs to be done. And uh, uh, the subsequent ones are relevant to the next transit or downstream transit nodes or egress nodes so and i think it'll depend on the indicator type so for example for entropy label um when you get the entropy label the next thing is the entropy uh sorry eli the next thing is the entropy label and you can just stop there and, and do what you need to do but if you have a different kind of indicator for example if you have a uh, the one thing that occurs to me is that if you have a hop by hop OAM indicator in an, in some shape or form, you might want to skip to the end of the stack and start processing uh, OAM. Whereas if you don't have that, you say I'm not going to go any further. So um, I, I don't think we can make a general comment on the first uh, indicator. Um, it will depend on the semantics of that indicator. Okay, I hear you. Uh, so you're saying it depends on the indicator type, uh, the, uh, the action. Right, right. right. Okay. Um, anything to add on this point, Noah? Uh, no. Okay, next. Uh, Next, I have a question. Questions draft, uh, Loa. Did you want? Are you questioning? Oh, this is a draft. It doesn't exist. No, it exists. Okay, I need to search. It. Yeah, I, I answered a question on it today. It definitely exists. It does. Look at the MMI. Yeah, uh, look at the MPLS page. It's there. Okay. If you have a link, uh, I appreciate it that you send it. Uh... Didn't the link from the wiki work? No, it, it didn't. Oops. No, it didn't. Oh, I fixed that. The, 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 the situation is that uh, two meetings ago, I promised to start this question document, to actually document the outstanding questions and then actually point to where we have put the solutions. And uh, that is, it's way down. Yeah, I see it. I yeah. see it. Uh, so, uh, the thing is that uh, I thought I would have more time to work on it, but I didn't. So it's rather bare, and uh, Stuart has already discovered an error. So I will do an update uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, but the point is that I need help to formulate the all outstanding questions, so we actually get the good picture of uh, what what we have to work with and where we actually put the solutions. And that's all I want to say about that draft just now. And I will fix the link. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, we, we have some common, uh, some minutes. Um, we can process the minutes and, you know, I'm sure there were questions asked and some answers given. Uh, sure. Yeah. I will do that as soon as I have time. Okay. 
right? And if any volunteers want uh, help with the formulating questions, I, I thought one of the questions. I, 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 I'm. I thought the one of the questions about whether you were going to run out of bandwidth flooding MSD. I, I thought was kind of resolved because I can't imagine anyone doing this thing without a um, an IGP or its equivalent, and you would it would be trivial to flood that. So certainly there is no flooding scaling issue with uh, flooding MSDs. The capability, you mean, or or the size? Yeah, the site, the, you know, capability of each router, right? That's what you yeah, say. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a capability thing. I can do an MSD of this, and it's just a few extra bytes in the um, in the IGP, isn't it? Yeah, and that's one question. Uh, I think he wants to capture all the questions. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. But I think it's it's uh, lower has got it as an open question. I, I cannot possibly believe that there's a scaling issue with flooding the um, MSD capability. I believe you're right, but that also means that you need to have an I IGP. Well, 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 if you haven't got an IGP, you've got a management system that's doing the moral equivalent of it, haven't you? Haven't you? Um, so the management system will tell every uh, node in the network uh, the capabilities of every other node in the network. No, the management system will know what the capabilities are and won't permit the packet to get constructed in the first place. I agree. Validation time. Uh, yeah, it needs to validate the path. Okay, I need to think about that. It's, uh, it's not entirely clear. Um, so, if you've got an IGP, I think we're cool. If there's an IGP in there, it's done. All right. I mean, we may not have the uh, the code in the 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 the, um, the uh, TLVs, although I suspect we do. Um, but uh, it's kind of done. It's not a not a problem. If there is not an IGP, then you must be using a management system, and the management system had better know the capabilities of all of the routers. And the management system is the only thing that can authorize the construction of an LSP because it's the only thing that knows enough context to create the LSP. And since it knows the capability of all the routers, it would know what the MSD was. So I don't think it's a problem. I can't see how it can possibly be a problem. Okay. Then let me come back and I, I okay. think I think I think you're right, but uh, I need to think. Okay. Um... I'll switch to the next uh, um, the point here, and we still have a little time. Uh, Kiriti, uh, the the discussion on the uh, you know uh, indicator in the label stack and how it helps uh, generic uh, indicator. Uh, um, do you have some uh, slides you wanted to share, or you want to talk about it? Oh, I, I mean, I have the same slides that I shared at the um, special meeting that we had. Um, but I, I, you know, for me there are a couple of things. Um, I haven't attended all of the um, open design team meetings, so I'm not sure exactly where we are. The big things that I would like um, the group to tackle is a the idea that we we use, you know, of the 32 bits in the MPLS label, we use um, 31 bits as opposed to trying to just use the top 20 bits. Um, you know, once you, the top 20 bits um, say that there's more than, you know, this is a special purpose label, uh, just not a regular label. There is no reason to say, oh, and the last eight bits are TTL or the EXP bits um, or the TC bits are telling you what traffic class this is. So, so that's, uh, I think, the, 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 the one big thing. Um, and second, if you do that, then you can uh, incorporate many more functions in a single indicator. And so um, what this draft said was how you put into one indicator multiple functions, which I think is an important thing to solve because the dichotomy between you have uh, uh, one label spe uh, indicator, uh, special purpose label, 
and then you have the extended special purpose label, which means you need two labels to do anything. And, and then on top of that, you may have further information that you want to do. And then you have multiple of those. Um, I think that whole system is um, very, very taxing, both on the label stack and on uh, forward, forwarding, forwarding processors. So this idea that you, comp you, you put multiple functions into a single indicator, I think is one that we need to think about and pursue. And this idea that we uh, reuse the, the bits uh, so that we have 20, 31 bits that we can use. For example, not that I'm a big fan of it, but if you were to say, let me reuse the uh, MPLS, uh, sorry, the uh, ELI to be both an ELI and something else, um, trying to divide 20 bits into two things um, gives you very little room. Whereas if you have 31 bits, it's a little better. So, so from all those points of view, I just um, want um, to know where uh, the design team is in terms of that those discussion and how we proceed. Well, one thing's for sure, we can do lots of cool things once we adopt your idea, Kariti. I mean, I don't know whether what you're proposing is the right thing to do in terms of the exact technical design, but the concept that um, um, we can use a bunch of the other bits in a special purpose label um, is quite an interesting one. In fact, it's a very interesting one. Well, thank, thanks, Stuart. Um, yeah, so, so uh, I mean, the, the other thing is that we have many uh, requests for the special purpose labels right now. So the idea that we can consolidate them, I think, is, is important as well. Uh, but yeah, thanks for that, um, Stuart. Um, so how do we proceed? And this is a question for Tarek and, and Loa. Uh, I think what uh, the, you know the, the, uh, the design team uh, charter was uh, is to uh, agree on certain uh, you know I, I think there's some agreement starting to uh, um, come together. There were other people suggesting other ways to do uh, to carry you know uh, um, um, in the label stack um, applications or functions. Um, you want to want to hear their view or point of view as well. There are competing drafts to yours as well, Kiriti. Um, and, and if there is enough consensus on this idea, uh, I think uh, the working group can move ahead. Um, you know, we'll, we'll... Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm I don't know because I'm quiet about something for the usual commercial reasons. Um, but I do think there's a. I think the first part of Kriti's observation is really, really powerful, and we need to do, look at all of the other possibilities uh, associated with realizing we've got some spare bits. Yes. Um, Loa, do you want to com comment, or uh, I guess? Uh, so basically, the question is, where are we? Are we ready to take a dis decision now? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, but it could be that I've been, I wasn't on the meeting last, last time and um, uh, I've, been, I've been traveling a bit, so I'm kind of not really up to speed. Uh, but uh, let's say two to three weeks, I think we can get nearer, nearer to uh, making a decision or uh, as much of a decision that we need. Mm -hmm. One of the problem that um, we have quite a few um, proposals and um, it seems that there needs to be a little bit more understanding of how, you know, um, agreeing on uh, one proposal's particular items would impact the other proposals and kind of getting to that point that everybody understands that um, I'm not quite sure how, how, how we most efficiently do that. 
So I think, you know, one thing is to have that arm wrestling, but I think a, a different approach is to say, what are the things that we want to achieve? Um, you know, to Stuart's point, this idea that we have um, more bits and that we can use for different things, um, you know, if, if A, we agree that that's a powerful idea, and B, we say, okay, given that, how do we use it? How do we encode it? What's the technical details? Um, what do we, what are we trying to achieve with that? I think that would be a first step towards them saying, okay, let's uh, let's figure out exactly, um, you know, let's then go to the arm wrestling. But I think starting the arm wrestling up front is probably not the most effective way. I guess the other question, of course, is always, you know, how do the different vendors feel about um, a particular change in the encoding being feasible, um, you know, for current or future platforms? I'm not, I'm not sure what kind of the, the typical way is on how that's being vetted with an MPLS. So, uh, you know, I think there's a sort of bigger question there. Um, a lot of things that are put into the MPLS um, architectures from 20 plus years ago um, were based on what we could do in the forwarding plane then. And and what we can do in the forwarding plane today is so much, you know, so different, if not so much more. Um, so I think coming back to this question of, um, you know, the question that you're asking, what do vendors think? I think that is, you know, an important part, and, and so um, we did talk to Broadcom, and so we have an author from Broadcom uh, as a co-author on the draft. But I think the other part of it is, what do vendors think um, in general, um, not just for this draft, but in terms of some of the things that are going on, um, or that were written down in MPLS, um, you know, 20 years ago, if you look at RFC, 3031 or 3032, um, you know, are there things there that we need to change? So this idea, for example, that the TC bits or, or the TTL bits have to be treated in a particular way, um, are there things that we need to you know, rethink um, there? There's always the question of what, what about backward compatibility and what if there's a, you know, even if it's capable of different things, if there's a router that doesn't have the new microcode or the new whatever it is that uh, helps it do, do forwarding, how does it deal with this? So I think one is the question of, given that this opens up a lot of possibilities, how do we use those possibilities? What do we do with them? And two is, what um, do you do um, in terms of um, moving the MPLS architecture to a new place, given the very different forwarding capabilities we have today from 20 years ago, and what do you do about legacy? And I don't mean legacy in a bad way, but you know, a router that um, has old code, uh, even if it's capable of all kinds of fancy things, if it encounters this packet, what does it do? So I think there are like three different things. Um, I would like to focus on the first, but I think the other two are also important. And we might come back. And I think this is part of what Stuart was uh, saying in that um, the you know, special meeting on Friday on the last day of the, of the ITF, the last ITF. But rethinking um, the MPS architecture, um, and I don't know if it was specifically in view of the completely different um, capabilities we have, but I think that's a, that's slightly orthogonal, but that's uh, a step we need to do as well in the working group. Right. So, I mean, as, as far as, you know, the general principles of encoding, right? So I think some of these, these things that were kind of done more started out as work around by, by vendors for something MPLS didn't have in terms of, you know, just trying to figure out if the payload is, um, you know, IP or not. And we've been spending, for example, I think the meeting that you were in there um, on, on discussing, you know, the, the first nibble of the payload afterwards, right? Right. Um, yeah. and, and, and those type of things are, um, you know, sure, they're, is that something, you know, 
that we feel we might even want to retire at some point in time, sure, we can always, uh, you know, try to say, well, we before we retire something, we need to, uh, you know, figure out that we have a safe transition story, right? But uh, when it comes to, you know, the whole storyline that Stuart was explaining, you know, on, on that Friday, it seemed like there is, uh, you know, some amount of technology debt uh, we've accumulated for which we have already or could in this effort here find better solutions, right? So um, I, th I think, you know, trying to at least identify these high level blocks um, that uh, might need to be discussed and uh, have opinions on, you know, retire, improve or, you know, so something like that. Right, and, 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 and the thing there is that you know, the, the specifics of um, if I want to encode multiple functions in a single indicator, um, what would be the benefit of that? How would I use it? How would I do the encoding? And that is orthogonal to the question that you uh, were just talking about. I think they're related, and I think they both need to be tackled. But um, I think we can, at some level, separate it. And then if one impacts the other, we can we can come back to it, but we can carry them out as two different uh, tracks or two different um, pursuits. Yeah, I have a question for the design team. Um, I like the new architecture, the way MPLS is approaching, but are we going to use any use case as our driving example? I have missed past meetings, so I don't know about it. These are the use cases that will fit in the current design and will benefit from what new things we are going to do here. Uh, indeed, uh, the, I don't the, know the, the new architecture has been written down. So yeah, the, um, the, there, the, there was two use cases, two main use cases that were drivers to the uh, to this design team uh, uh, being put uh, put together and. Uh, one was was the idea of doing OEM and segment routing networks, IOEM specifically, in C2 OEM. And the other one was to uh, carry a slice identifier in the packet and other pa other identifiers as well. So the, the, the one that's driving um, a group of us is um, uh, latency-based forwarding, where you need to know, and, and indeed, that's what um, Jakob Stein was um, uh, going for as well, but we have different views on how to do it. Okay, so can we just have them as a placeholder in open DT questions draft that these are the two things, because I could not see any motivation in that draft. That's why I asked. Yeah. yeah. I think in general, this 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 would go down to you know better um, you know QS parameters. Um, Yakov has you know the demand for per hop stuff in an SR fashion like per hop. Um, uh, we I think would start with something on a uh, path based like in the extension header, and I think it would be valid to say that you know better QS would be something to consider both for within the stack and in the extension header. Okay, I took an action item to add uh, use cases. Um, any any other comment on the, from the uh, other proposals authors? Uh... So, so um, um, Tadek, um, I understand that use cases are important, but I think this idea that we step back and rethink what we have put into the um, you know MPLS architecture, I think that's an important thing because otherwise. A lot of people in design, for example, I mean, till today, every time someone says, um, I want a new special purpose label, it's always a single use special purpose label. I want a new special purpose label for uh, no further fast route. I want a new special purpose for, for hop by hop OM. I want a second one for end to end OM. You know, that, that thinking is not going to change. And so I think this idea of stepping back and rethinking the MPLS architecture, uh, even if it's as, as uh, small as you know the first nipple after the label stack, um, I think we need to you know actually, if not have a fancy architecture, have some guidelines for that. I think that wasn't. I think what we were talking about right now wasn't a disagreement with that. 
but just, you know, many, many people, including myself, can wrap their heads back around abstract concepts when they can try to map them to a few practical examples, which are these use cases uh, to validate them. In that one. No, don't disagree at all. Yeah, I'm the same way. I think yeah, I mean, you know, one what of the question of architecture is, is um, you know, what, what what really is an architecture, right? Because I think the one thing I'd, I, I've been seeing not very, very clearly, you know, differentiated is, you know, the, the, the parsing, you know, um, architecture versus then, you know, how the semantic is driven from that. And I think it, it, it would really be helpful to become more clear about, you know, what parsing we think is feasible. Um, and then, you know, the semantic that can be driven uh, from that separately, right? Because I think the semantic driven from that is getting a lot closer to use cases. It's not only about what's in the packet, but also what can, what, what are the actions the router can really do. And so maybe really it's, it's the, you know, MPLS header parsing architecture that, that we might want to become clearer and, 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 and better about. So the problem, I think, is that we don't want to be prescriptive about how people, you know, do the parsing. But I think there's a number of things. For example, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the multiple gal draft, but, but because I think it isn't, you know, set up to why it should be or why multiple gals are interesting. But but the bigger question that that raises is somewhere someone has written down that you can only have one gal. And if there's a reason that you want to have multiple gals, um, why did you put that restriction in? And that might be because of parsing, that might be because of capabilities, you know, uh, 15 years ago. Uh, and I think those are the kind of things that we should re, re, uh, revisit and address and say, some of the things that have been written down um, may not apply anymore. And so those those are the kinds of things that I would like to capture. Not that we come up with a fancy new architecture, and definitely not that we come up with a way of doing parsing, but what we capture these restrictions that we've put in and say, hey, here's, uh, for example, uh, the earlier discussion on readable depth, it may not be anymore that you can only look three, three uh, labels deep, but if you do look beyond that, there's a, there's a penalty, and so there's a value to optimizing that, but it doesn't have to be an absolute. So those those are the kind of things I would like to capture, as opposed to you know here's a brand new architecture or here's a, a parsing guideline. I think the one one of the problems I've I've been seeing with with a data plane, whether it's MPLS or IP, right, is that the way we really specify you know the and the the, the the representation of a header on the wire and the information elements in it is ASCII art, right? So uh, maybe, you know, something like parsing could be maybe better word for that would be, you know, really just a, a, a formal language to represent um, the information model of an MPLS header um, in the same way as, as we've done in, in the management plane with Yang or in um, the control plane with, you know, things like CEP or CDDL kind of coming up with a way on how we have a formal representation of, you know, how the header can look like. And of course, then at that point in time, you get to the next step, which is you can, in any new extension that you're defining, you can you can use that instead of ASCII art. And, and it's also becoming clearer, you know, what, what is permitted and what's not. I just want to comment that this idea of modeling, uh, yeah. Uh, the format of the data in a packet uh, was proposed um, recently uh, in the control plane um, by Tony uh, uh, Tony P um, um, at ITF. So the idea of you know uh, um, rather than writing text-based encoding, using a model to uh, uh, to, to format the uh, control plane packets. Now, if the data plane, I think what you're saying is the data plane, uh, data packet also can follow. It's interesting proposal, and uh, yeah, maybe we should see a draft on that. Uh, what are the limitations there? I mean, so so the one way I've been looking at it is just look at the, you know, way on how you can specify in something that looks a little bit like a C structure, a packet header um, parsing 
in P4, which is also very much an abstraction of what, you know, an implementation, which might be quite different uh, on different platforms would do underneath it. Right. Um, and uh, that particular model of uh, P4 isn't really well suited to, for example, capture something like a variable um, stack that we have. So I think what we, we, we can draw some, you know, uh, good, good background from something like P4, but uh, we would probably have to come up with something ourselves. And I think what Tony was saying is something which, you know, would allow any possible packet header to be uh, encoded, which might be a good thing to do, but uh, obviously for the scope of MPLS, maybe we'll have something more constrained. I, I, you have to walk the fine line of um, not being prescriptive. So um, yes, P4 is a, is a much better language than others like um, OpenFlow tried to be many years ago. <clears throat> but we have our own way of doing forwarding Broadcom, has, I mean, of uh, describing these things. So if you can be sufficiently abstract and you can say this is, um, and maybe, it's, you know, very scoped, I mean, P4 does all, all kinds of forwarding, but if you scope it to MPLS forwarding, yes, I understand the problem uh, exists for IP as well, uh, especially IPv6, but um, at least as far as this working group is concerned, if you scope it to MPLS label stack processing, uh, and maybe a little bit beyond the label stack because you know there's a stuff beyond that, and if you well, if you scope it to that and you say this is an informational document, not not a standard stack, yeah, I could get on board with that. But anything beyond that would get me a little nervous. But your analogy with ASCII um, does, <laughs> yeah, it, that, that, that rings true. Okay, um, we still have five minutes, I think, the, to the end of the meeting. But, uh, um, uh, I want to propose maybe, do we want to hear from the other proposals of the uh, Carrying information in the label stack or having an indicator, there were uh, at least one or two uh, other ways to do that. Um, I can poke the authors of the other drafts to, to present their view, or uh, uh, we can follow up on what you said, uh, uh, Kuriti, is uh, take a step back and see a, a generic way uh, to solve the problem rather than having point fixes and. Uh, ben, ben Bates. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be useful to hear from the other authors, but, um, you know, we don't want to get too bogged down. Uh, you know, getting their views is important, getting their specifics maybe not as important. And then hopefully we can step back and say, e, this is a problem that's worth solving. These are the things we want to achieve. Now let's figure out how to achieve them. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Um, um, in the minute, uh, maybe yeah. it's already done, but can you capture the other drafts that are um, along these lines? Or maybe sure. I'll talk to you offline. I'll, I'll put them in the minutes uh, and I'll talk to you, no problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anything else be, be, before we close the meeting? Anybody wants to add uh, anything to the minutes or make a comment? Uh, just one thing. Uh, we talked about getting the coordinators for uh, track one and track two. I sent out a mail today, and if someone is interested, please talk to uh, the MPLS chairs or, yeah, talk to me. Uh, it's really needed. And it, I don't think it's too much work. Okay, I'm stopping the recording now.